Welcome! On this video, I will go over the typical sequence of building inspections, and although this video is specific to residential projects, the premise is similar to commercial industrial projects and additions and alterations. Before I dive into the sequence of inspections, I want to mention two key pre-inspection items. First, Always be sure the construction work and the inspections are done to the official building department stamped approved plans and documents. It is important to understand that before the approved plans building permit are issued, they go through a multi-agency review for building code and local requirements verification. And often, after the review process is completed, the design changes in order to satisfy requirements addressed during the plan review, which, once again, is the reason you should not do the work to the unofficial plan set. Second, verify flood hazard zone requirements. Projects constructed in flood hazard zones are scrutinized by FEMA and failure to assure compliance with the FEMA mandates can be costly to property owners and the jurisdiction. Here's a link to access a FEMA search portal. Please note that I will review inspection specifics at upcoming videos. This video will primarily focus on the sequence of building inspections for residential projects. This information can be found in the administrative chapter of the building codes, so let's begin. The under slab utilities inspection are normally the first inspections for slab on grade buildings. During this inspection, the building inspector inspects the sanitary sewer pipes, water pipes, and gas pipes. This includes inspection of material types, slopes, fittings, trench bedding, burial depths, and backfill material. The underground water pipes are also pressure tested at this time to include a water test on the plumbing pipes. Under slab electrical is also inspected, which may include conduit and the grounding electrode. The inspector generally verifies pipe size, types, and burial depths during this inspection. Next is the foundation inspection, and this inspection takes place after the forms are installed, including the rebar, anchor bolts, and hold downs. An inspection report by the soils engineer of record may be required prior to this inspection for certification of the footings excavation and pad compaction. A certification from a licensed surveyor for the proper location of the building setbacks and elevation may also be required. So check with your local building department regarding the soils and setback certification requirements. After the foundation inspection is signed off, the concrete slab inspection occurs. For this inspection, the reinforcement and anchorage are installed, as well as the sand subbase and vapor barrier. Please know that both the foundation inspection and concrete slab are often inspected concurrently. Next on the inspection sequence is the subfloor framing inspection for buildings constructed on raised floor framing. This inspection takes place after the foundation inspection is signed off and after all underfloor piping and ductwork have been installed to include the floor framing, but before any subfloor sheathing and insulation is installed. At this inspection, water pipes must be under pressure test to include a water test on the sewer drain pipes with a 10 foot head. The underfloor insulation is then inspected after the underfloor framing is signed off and the insulation installed. After the foundation, slab, or underfloor framing is signed off, the building begins to go vertical and the inspections that follow are the roof sheathing inspection which occurs after the roof plywood has been nailed off. At this inspection, the building inspector inspects the nail types and spacing plywood size and types, structural straps if required, and roof trusses to name a few. A rule of thumb is to inspect every element above the top plate, that is blocks, clips, and shear wall transfers. By doing this, it reduces the time spent on the forthcoming rough framing inspection. After the roof sheathing inspection is signed off, the exterior shear inspection occurs. This inspection is often done concurrently with the roof sheathing inspection. However, this inspection takes place after the plywood shear has been installed and nailed off. And during this inspection, the building inspector inspects 
nailing types, spacing and sizes, plywood shear types and sizes, wall openings, and structural straps. A rule of thumb is to inspect every element below the top plate at the exterior wall framing, that is headers, studs, and structural connectors to the walls. And once again, by following this rule of thumb, it can reduce the time spent on the rough framing inspection by allowing the inspector to focus primarily on the interior walls, including the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing work. Although the roof covering and lath are inspected later in the phase, the building must be weather protected by this inspection. The rough trades inspections can be performed individually or concurrently, since the trades inspection is one of the most time-consuming inspections. The rough trades inspection includes rough electrical, for the rough electrical inspection to take place, all wiring, outlet boxes, main and sub panels must be installed, excluding the light fixtures and receptacle outlets. The rough plumbing inspection takes place after all water, waste, gas and HVAC pipes are installed and under a required test. The rough mechanical inspection occurs after all ductwork and interior mechanical equipment furnace and environmental fans have been installed. And lastly on the rough trades, the rough frame inspection. This inspection is conducted after the rough electrical, plumbing and mechanical inspections have been signed off and after the framing is complete. The reason this inspection is last on the rough inspection sequence is that by now any framing, beams, ceilings or roof framing will have been notched or bored by the installation of the electrical, mechanical and plumbing work. A very important note, if your project requires fire sprinklers, be sure the fire department inspects and approves the fire sprinklers prior to scheduling the rough trades inspection with the building department. The building department cannot sign off your rough trades inspection without fire department clearances, so please keep a note of that. After all the rough trade inspections are signed off and the building weather protected, the installation inspection is inspected to verify energy requirements such as verifying the window solar heat gain coefficient, U-factors, and installation R-values as stipulated on the energy compliance forms, amongst other energy requirements. The exterior lath inspection is often inspected together with the installation inspection. However, during this inspection, the building inspector verifies the installation of the wire lath and paper, which includes fasteners and spacing building flashing, screen vents, and mechanical vent terminations. Energy requirements related to windows and other building envelope requirements are often verified during this inspection. The gypsum board inspection occurs after the interior gypsum has been installed and secured and before taping the gypsum board. During this inspection, the building inspector inspects the gypsum board type, such as moisture-resistant board in bathrooms, and fire-resistant gypsum board in areas such as separations between garage and house. This includes inspecting the nails and screw types, sizes, and spacing. The interior shower pan and lath, when it applies, are inspected during or after the gypsum board inspection phase in order to verify lath paper and wire or tile backer board to include a water test on the shower pan. And lastly, the final building inspection. This inspection occurs after all other applicable inspections have been signed off and all interior and exterior work is complete. However, prior to scheduling the final inspection with the building department, it is important to be sure that all agencies involved in the project have provided final clearances. Agencies such as fire department for fire safety and fire sprinkler requirements planning department for landscape and project conditions requirements, engineering department for encroachment permit requirements, utility districts for water and or sewer requirements, and health departments if septic systems are installed. Well, this concludes the sequence of building inspections. I want to give a special shout out to the wonderful folks at CodeCheck for supporting our industry by allowing me to use their helpful illustrations throughout this video. Check out their easy to understand resources which can be helpful to owner builders, contractors, and building inspectors.
Well, that is all for now. Continue to stay tuned for more videos. Until next time, be awesome, everyone.